from the Director of Development Center at Fresno State. We have a, uh, before we introduce our panelists today that are all alums of Fresno State from Business and the College of Arts and Humanities, Damian Lay is also um, behind the scenes running our, our webinar today. And then also Sheila Gallagher-Price and Mary Willis from the Career Center are on the back end and they will be answering your questions and chats participants. So feel free to ask questions that are career related to Career Center or any of these wonderful participants that took time out of their busy working lives today to spend some time with us. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna call on you to introduce yourselves. Julia, if you could tell us when did you graduate? What was your major and what are you doing now? Okay, thanks Debbie. Hi, my name is Julia Zuniga and I graduated in May of 2018. I was a business administration uh, major with an emphasis in finance. Currently, I'm working at Wells Fargo, our commercial bank, as a portfolio manager. Awesome, thank you. And where do you live? I'm living here in Fresno. Okay, you're in Fresno. Madison, how about you? You're one of our um, alums from the College of Arts and Humanities. That's right, yeah. So my name is Madison Artist. Um, I graduated all the way back in 2012, which feels like a lifetime ago at this point. Um, I was a photojournalism and sociology major, so a little bit of a different path there. Uh, and I currently am a senior manager at GoDaddy on the learning and talent team. So that's me. Yeah, and you want to share you want to share what other companies you've worked for in your career path and we'll get into that a little bit later but yeah. um so yes i have worked so prior to GoDaddy, i was at tesla uh for uh, two and a half years and prior to that i was at apple uh for just about three years so i've i've bounced around a little bit looking forward to chatting about it <laughs> yeah and you've lived in some different cities as well yes i'm in um seattle area uh currently so i'm up here in stereo typical rainy uh, Pacific Northwest at the moment. <laughs> uh, Madison and I didn't know each other. It was kind of interesting. I went on a tour um, through an organization I belong to, to the Tesla plant in Reno, and they put an alum panel together of new hires. And when Madison said she graduated from Fresno State, I got all giddy and ran up to her. And it's like, oh, wow, how awesome to have a Fresno State um, alum working here for Tesla and Reno. So um, we kind of met on a random basis. It is cool that all of you have really good LinkedIn profiles. I checked you all out and really learned a lot about your career paths. And we actually tell students, you want to find a career path is get on LinkedIn and find an alum and have a conversation with them that has your major. You could learn a lot. So um, we kind of look at you as the, the ground for us to see is what happens to people after they graduate and what career paths do they take? No matter like your major, photojournalism and sociology, and you're working for GoDaddy and Apple and Google. Pretty interesting. Daniel, you work for a large corporation. Let's hear from you. Hey guys, I'm Daniel Dozier. I uh, graduated in December of 2015 uh, with an uh, entrepreneurship degree. And uh, I am now uh, working in Boise, Idaho for Western Power Sports as the uh, International Sales Support Specialist. Very good, excellent. Daniel actually worked in my office many moons ago as one of my former student assistants. It's good to see you. We have another Daniel with another large corporation, Daniel Vartanian. Uh, Daniel, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. It's always always good to see another Daniel in the uh, in, in the crowd too. So <laughs> solid, solid name. Um, yeah, I, I second I second what Matt has said. I graduated in 2013, seems a long, long time ago. Um, graduated with a uh, in business marketing emphasis and, and loved it so much. I came back for my MBA the, the next year. Uh, so MBA grad in, in 2014. Currently work for PepsiCo in, in sales in Southern California, um, specifically in the recreation field. So being from a large recreation standpoint, that's fun. Uh, from all the airports down here, aquariums, zoos, the new SoFi football stadium, Chargers, Rams, Hollywood Bowl, things like that. Um, I directly manage the ships, um, you know, down here and, and uh, live in Orange County, if you know uh, Mission VAO down here. So loving it so far, but definitely miss Fresno and, and everything that Fresno has to provide every, every day. That's awesome. And Daniel love Daniel V loved school so much. He actually went back and got an MBA. Was that in the Craig school that you got your MBA? It was. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was a scholarship athlete cross country and track and field got uh, pretty badly injured my junior year. So I was able to salvage 
some some, um, uh, some time there, so they're able to able to use use those those seasons later. So I figured if Fresno State's going to be fronting the bill, and I can learn from a great institution, yeah, then then why not? So float float right. my bachelor's degree. And now you're looking at going back to grad school again. We'll get into that a little later. Um, For sure. <laughs> he loves school so much. That's right. <laughs> And, and Jose, uh, let's hear about you. Yeah, so graduated from Fresno State 2015. I can say it, it does feel like an eternity, eternity ago, which that was only a couple of years ago, which is crazy to think. But I have graduated with a business uh, emphasis um, in human resource management. I also um, had a minor in economics as well. I am currently working for Central Valley Community Bank as the HR business partner. Um, here in Fresno, and uh, we have locations all throughout the the, the Central Valley region. So um, I, I tend to travel um, when necessary. Okay, traveling is part of your job. Good to know. And another HR major was Garrett. I've oh, got to take myself off on mute. So I'm um, if you. If you've been listening to Debbie at all, um, you know, don't start your 30 second elevator pitch. Uh, with your mute button on. Okay, so make sure that you're you're prepared when it comes that time. Uh, so I'm Garrett. I graduated from the uh, Craig School Business with a business management degree and an option in human resources. Um, I worked in after I graduated. I worked at Table Mountain Casino uh, for quite a few years doing uh, HR and risk and safety management. And then from there, uh, two years ago, I moved up here to Seattle. Um, and I'm work I was working in the hospitality industry, um, managing human resources for two Hyatt hotels. And just recently, I switched over to Washington State's largest utility company, Puget Sound Energy, and I'm an HR advisor uh, with them now. Yeah, I thought Garrett had a good story to share today, too, because, um, because of COVID, um, his job was impacted by that. Not a good time to be in hospitality and entertainment for anyone. I've heard from a few Fresno State alums that have actually lost, lost jobs and paid off because of COVID-19. So um, it's good to have Garrett. He switched into very different industries um, to keep going and bring the resilience of the bulldogs of Fresno State really good example of that. And Kaylee, Kaylee did uh, one major but is working in a whole different field, right Kaylee? Yeah, so I graduated from uh, the Craig School of Business in 2015, um, but I graduated with the emphasis in, in accounting. I uh, spent about a year at a public CPA firm and found that the work was just not what I loved doing, uh, so I made a complete 180 uh, uh, into marketing. So I've worked at a marketing agency, but now I'm a marketing coordinator at California Health Sciences University. Um, where I get to really stretch my creative skills and creative writing, photography, videography, things like that, um, and website management as well. So it's definitely, I found work that I love. It's been pretty exciting to watch CHSU um, as they, I live just blocks from the brand new medical school for doctors of osteopathy, which is really exciting to see that. And you've been part of that. Just over a year I've been here, yeah. Yeah, and your, your neighbor in the box beside you on my Zoom screen is Laura, and she's also um, in marketing and mass comm journalism as well. She's another alum of the College of Arts and Humanities. Go ahead, Laura. Hey, everyone. My name is Laura Maciel. Um, I graduated ooh, 2016. I know it's been a couple years, but it's really flown by. Um, I graduated from the MCJ department back when it was still the mass communications and journalism department. Now it's media communications and journalism um, with my emphasis in advertising. Currently, I am the communications manager with the Central Valley Community Foundation uh, based out here in Fresno. So we have Central Valley Community Bank and Central Valley Community Foundation. So we don't want to get Jose and, and Laura mixed up there. I saw that. It's like like similar it happens very often our office they're like um can you help me with my account i'm like Ooh, <laughs> honey that's great love it and last but not least eric yay you joined us all the way from google hi eric hi sorry about being a little bit late everyone um uh, yes, yes my name is eric and i am an interview trained uh program manager at google um and i graduated from fresno state with a degree in 
business management in 2013. And you're at Google, so are you in the Bay Area? No, I actually moved back to the Fresno Clovis area uh, during oh, the pandemic. Okay, and you're able to telecommute that way? Yeah, uh, all of Google right now is um, like working remotely. Yeah, it's been pretty interesting to watch um, as we work with students looking for jobs. Um, many want to be able to telecommute and stay in the valley because the cost of living is so much lower here and that is is what happens when the pandemic lessens with the vaccine when and when and if we get that will that allow the continuation of telecommuting work because as we were talking about before the workshop started how many of us actually love working from home mm -hmm. um, and hoping that it continues on in some form into our future so I, I guess what I'd like to look at now is think back to your college days and I know each of you had very different experiences, but let's start with internships. We, you know, I met a lot of you through the internship program in the Craig School of Business, and our university highly looks at internships as a, as a high impact practice because there's actually research that shows that students do internships tend to do well um, in finding a job after they graduate. So. Um, how many of you actually did an internship before you graduated? Okay, by show of hands. Yeah, so let's start with Julia. <laughs> Michaela Ford is on the chat and she said, yeah, let's talk about internships. Yay! <laughs> okay, Julia, how, what internship did you do and how did that help you? So I interned at Wells Fargo. So I'm, I interned in the office I'm currently in and uh, it was actually Michaela who encouraged me to apply to this office at Wells Fargo. She's like, sure, it's a good opportunity. I didn't really know what middle market banking is, um, and I don't think many people do. Um, and it's, it's really commercial banking, and we uh, generally bank customers who make $100 million in revenue or more. So we work with pretty high net worth individuals and high net worth uh, companies. And so just, you know, through getting exposure in the office and kind of see, seeing what type of deals we're working on, what type of customers we're working with, and just seeing the day-to-day -day really helped me just understand, uh, you know, what I could be potentially doing and um, just get a feel of the, the culture in the office. I know that, like, I was, like, I was born and raised in Fresno, so I really wanted to, you know, get out of Fresno and, you know, go to a bigger city, but once I saw the office culture and how nice everybody was and just welcoming, I was like, okay, this is like an office that I want to be at. And something that was super nice was turn going into my senior year, the summer going into my senior year. And I got a job offer that August. So I was able to go into my senior year and not have to worry about finding a job or anything. So um, I highly recommend to anybody to do an internship and just get your feet wet into the professional world. Yeah, it worked out definitely for you. It led to an actual full-time job. Garrett, you did it. You did two internships, I think, didn't you? I did. I'm so a couple pieces of my college involvement things that I really made a focus to um, to do were inter internships, and they were both during my senior year. Um, so one for each semester, and then I also got involved with SHRM. Um, I was the I was the president of the SHRM um, student body. Um, for those two semesters as well. And then I think Jose succeeded me. Um, <laughs> so it's good to see him. Um, one of the things I wanna, I, I definitely wanna stress with the internships um, and getting yourself ready for the real world is if your situation allows it, um, you know, and you find yourself offered in, while this wasn't my situation, if you find yourself offered an unpaid internship, um, don't turn your nose up at that. That is still going to be very valuable experience if you're able to make that work for your life situation. Um, because getting that exposure to how a company functions, you know, what day to days look like, uh, being able to network and create those relationships with um, people within organizations is the most important part. Um, the money is nice, um, but I would also recommend too, as you're getting ready for uh, entering the job world, is if you do have your resume padded with um, just regular employment that may not be related to your career, uh, having a body of work that you can fall back on proves that you can be a viable employee. And that means, and that makes an employer uh, decision to hire you, you risk proven that you can hold a job. So if you're able to work 
um, while doing school, try to pick, picking up internships, that's gonna do so much for you. Great, thank you, Garrett. Jose, you did an internship, right? Yeah, I actually had four you while I was there at Fresno State. I was pretty active when it came to the internship. Four. Uh, yeah, so I, I four little internships, but I had the privilege of, of being in a situation where um, I wasn't working, right? So I fully took advantage of um, pursuing those internships. So when I came in my freshman year, it's never too early, it's never too late in your college career uh, to potentially pursue uh, that internship opportunity. When I first came in, um, I was coming in doing sports marketing. So um, I internship with Fresno State Marketing, got a good feel for what it was. I liked it. Um, I, I, I liked it, but I didn't see myself as a career. And that internship helped my decision on my, um, my, my emphasis for my major as well, right? So it's not only going to help you gain some, some really good experience that you're going to need going into the, the workforce, um, it's going to help you identify, do I really want to do this, right? Uh, because often I, I think it could be the case where individuals may end up graduating and they may not have ever even worked in that field. So it's very common to see people with different uh, majors, right? Um, in, the, in the instances where they, they've never had experience in that field. So um, for me, um, I, I think what I recommend is, is look, being on the lookout for any internships. All of the, one, all of the internships that I had, leading into my internship with Central Valley Community Bank were unpaid, all right? So um, I was pursuing those opportunities, not looking to get paid. It was all for the experience. And, um, and, and you see the, the inner value in, um, in those experiences rather than just seeing the, the, the figure, the dollar figures of potentially earning money. Um, there, there's something much greater um, there for you that's, that's waiting. Um, and for me, um, with Central Valley Community Bank, obviously it led to my current position. So um, it was a position in training and development and it was a role that ended up expanding and I'm now the HR business partner. So um, I think there's, there's definitely a lot of worth still in internships if, um, if you come across one. So unpaid is okay to do. And also sometimes you learn what you don't want to do. That's interesting. You were sports marketing and now you're working in HR. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty big shift. Daniel, did you, Daniel Vartanian, you did an internship, didn't you? Yeah. Or no? Yeah, I did a couple. Yeah. So I, I, mean, I was pretty, pretty invested in, in athletics with cross country and track and field. And, you know, I was running 80 to 100 miles a week, you know, so I was always pretty tired. So I was looking for stuff where, you know, my legs weren't getting tired, you know, after <laughs> You know, you got to wake up pretty early in Fresno too before it's 90 degrees. So we did the the Fresno State Marketing uh, Athletic Internship, and that that's why I remembered Jose. I think we did the, kind of the same, at least the same year. So I did that one, but it, before that, I did do a an internship with a marketing advertising firm that they work with, like IQ and the Greek Fest, and played you know things like that throughout the valley. And and again, I think piggybacking on Jose, I I really found out what I didn't want to do. I was always doing some stuff that was kind of um, like the, you know, hustling a little bit, right? Like I was always big on eBay, trying to make money on, on eBay and do it, doing that way. And even in my, my PepsiCo interview, I explained to them how I was a, a power seller, you know, be listed as a power seller on eBay, things like that that weren't necessarily internship, but they found really intriguing because it was, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of scrapping by and I had, you know, make do with what I had. And, and uh, yeah, I found out, I, you know, I didn't necessarily like the marketing and advertising side through that shift that I did, you know, the, the first one, my junior year. and and then even moving into the athletics one, I found I liked, again, the sales side, which, which they were doing and, and on that piece, but not necessarily the, the marketing piece and on that side. So really, I think it was more so for me finding out what I didn't want to do because once you're out in the work, in the, in the work field and, and things like that, it's hard to kind of navigate and, and, and go, go a different direction. Um, but not being afraid to, to do so either, because again, we've got a long, long path ahead of us, right? In terms of our, our work career being early and so you want to do something that you're passionate about and fueled up about but yeah, I think internships can lead you in a, in a good direction or at least cross things off that you, that you don't want to do I think in the future. yeah it certainly lets you try it. it it is hard you know having been an instructor it's hard to teach students what it's going to be like to be in a career we you know unless you just get out there and do it Madison and Laura in the College of Arts and Humanities I know internships are really pushed as well did you both do an internship Laura did you do one where did you do your I did mine with the um, Central California Women's Conference. Um, 
I was an advertising major, so a lot of our curriculum was revolved around creative, um, you know, writing pitches, writing um, TV spots, radio, do a lot of focusing on that and on sales. So I really wanted to kind of venture out into different areas of MCJ. So I did it with the um, Central California Women's Conference as their PR intern. Um, so I got to learn a little bit more of a different side where I got to learn how to do press releases and events planning, which really helped me because um, it opened up my eyes to a career that was a lot different than what I was envisioning. I really thought I was going to go into marketing and sales, um, particularly in like television and radio. That didn't end up happening. I really, really fell in love with like the PR standpoint as well as event planning so it really kind of helped open the door to finding what my passion was and what i really wanted to do yeah somebody's chatting right now they're loving hearing about all these internships and how that kind of was segue into your pathways of your careers so that's you're encouraging our students watching today how important i mean we we talk about how important internships are and you did madison did you do one as well i did not uh so i think i'm one of the few on the call who didn't actually do a formal internship. Um, I did, however, work on campus all four years. Um, so I worked uh, for the theater department um, for two years. Uh, so helping put on like all the productions and everything there. And that definitely taught me some very uh, great skills at working with the public and dealing with people who are potentially unhappy with you, which is just a life skill that everyone should have. And mm -hmm. And then for my last two years, I worked uh, actually with the communications team. So I worked mainly in the photography office. Um, so I was doing all the photo stuff uh, for campus, but also was helping like write uh, different things that were going on. And, and really to echo what some of the other folks have said is that opportunity to work in like a traditional environment is super valuable, whether you get that as an internship or whether you get that as from working on campus or working at just another job, like learning how to like work with other people and like how to like basic things like how to run a meeting or like how to present yourself and present your ideas in a well thought out way like these are great basic skills that everyone should know how to do and they make a huge difference like you'd be surprised uh you know even when you get into the corporate world like sometimes not everybody has that and so if you have even some of these basic skills like you already have you know, um, a leg up in many ways. So uh, it was not a traditional internship, but still super valuable. So even, you know, working in, in a traditional way, if that's what you have to do for you, like, like off, so. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good point too on working on campus. Kaylee, you worked on campus. You worked in our office, kind of cheating here because we, <laughs> me, me, you worked for Michaela and I, as did Daniel and Julia. What, what, you know, I, did you do an internship as well, Kaylee? No, I didn't. So I'm the yeah. other one on the call that never did one. <laughs> yeah, and that's okay. So um, talk about your working on campus. What skills did you gain by doing that? And then I'm going to ask Daniel the same question. What skills do you think you gained from that experience? Well, working on campus with you and, and Michaela, you know, learn those basic professionalism skills that you take with you to every job you go to. Um, I was able to, that was kind of the beginning of my marketing a little bit because I got to do some um, so we're cute down the 99 promotion with you guys um, when you were doing that. So I kind of got some skills in marketing and just customer service. Like, you know, Madison said, you know, you got to be able to deal with people who are upset with you and that's a skill to obtain. <laughs> but uh, I also work for Dog Days, um, new student orientation. So that I did that for four summers, you said four summers. Um, and that really gave me the public speaking skills, um, interactions with people. It brought me out of my um, kind of shy factor I had. You know, I was able to go out and talk to anybody after working uh, over the summers because you just, you really had to network and talk to people and, and get people excited for Fresno State. Um, so, so a lot of the soft skills are what I picked up working on campus. And from the employer side, when I was at the marketing agency, we had a lot of interns come in and that was something that we were really teaching those is the soft skills and the organization skills and the basic professionalism that you need when you go into the real world. Yeah, and we are hearing that a lot from employers today, the soft skills, and um, they feel the generations coming out of college have lost some of that, and we really need to focus on that as well. So that's really good. Daniel, how about your experience working on campus? I know, Eric, I'm going to get to you too, because I know you worked on campus as well. So what skills do you think you gained, Daniel? For more campus 
Uh, yeah, so I, I definitely would agree with everything Kaylee said. Um, definitely had a similar experience uh, with the, all that. The, the customer service definitely is always helpful. And, um, uh, but also I, I thought I benefited a lot during other students coming in and talking about their internships. And mm -hmm. uh, that kind of helped to guide me with uh, kind of what direction I wanted to go as well. So that, that I thought was uh, kind of a nice uh, added benefit and, um, and just the like constant exposure to uh, interviewing tips and uh, best practices. And, uh, and then same thing, the, the public speaking skills I think are uh, incredibly valuable and, um, and uh, not only for uh, you know, being in meetings and stuff and being able to talk to your peers and whatnot, uh, but also, I, I think that crosses over a lot with good interview skills, which, uh, you know, especially in uh, uncertain time to uh, have those uh, sharp uh, and ready to go whenever you may need them. <laughs> it's true. That's very true. Always be ready for the next job, right? Um, Eric, you in the Learning Center, I think, on campus, didn't you? I did. So I worked in the Learning Center in the library, and I was also an RA in the dorms for a year. And then I did an internship as well, and it was actually at Central Valley Community Bank and HR for them as well. And okay, awesome. Wanna go? go ahead. No, go, go ahead. Ask your question. <laughs> um, did any did any of you in the group do research? Somebody's asking that on the chat right now. Was anybody involved? I'm not sure if we'll find that so much with business students and Eric. You did you do a thesis with? Were you a a, a scholar in the crit? Weren't you a business? Scholar? I was. I don't remember a thesis though for that. Okay, and Kaylee, you didn't do one, did you? With the were you in the honors program? I don't think so, right? No, so the, I think the honors program is the one that does the research. I was just a Craig Scholar, kind of the leadership group. Right. Good. So, oh, Eric, I didn't realize you were an RA. That must have been a super hard job. <laughs> um, you do learn lots of patience being an RA on campus, especially when you're trying to manage and direct like, people of your age, years, especially. And then there's the older ones, of course, that are just still in dorms. And so, you learn a lot of patience and time management skills. There's lots of conflict resolution that goes on there. And I mean, if you live in the dorms and want to learn a lot quickly, that is the one of the best ways to do it. Um, Cause it just like plunges you into that. And you learn tons of leadership skills, communication. Um, yeah, and you can just interact with a lot of different folks in different areas. And I think it's a great, uh, just a one way to great um, to network in, in college. Um, and gain that like some of those soft skills as well like you were talking about because that's all a lot of it is is like talking to people communication styles things like that yeah i think that's a really good point to add networking is such a huge part of today's corporate world for all these companies you know some of you are doing sales some of you are doing i mean you're all doing great cumulatively it was hard to all your linkedin profiles you all had done so many things it was hard to pick one thing out internships definitely popped out um, and then Garrett and, and Jose also um, alluded to that they were officers in a business club or organization. How many of you belong to a club or organization while you were at Fresno State? Yeah, and the, and the value to that and feeling that you probably gained a lot of those soft skills in that, exposing you maybe to professionals in your industry. Anybody want to speak to that maybe briefly? Yeah, I can uh, address that if I may. Um, okay, Daniel. So uh, I was in the Entrepreneur Mentor Program, uh, and, uh, and that was pretty much all that was, was uh, networking and um, meeting people in the, the local community from a variety of industries, and uh, um, they, they really push how important the networking skills are. And, and uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely true, because I, I got my first job from networking, and uh, um, it, uh, it's been, uh, super valuable to, especially for, for people who are still in Fresno, like, uh, Graham would be like extra beneficial for, for that. Cause then you are, uh, you can better maintain those connections and stuff like that. So I had a very good experience with that. Yeah. Another good example of networking actually led to your, actually led to your job. Um, there's a couple of questions on chat. I, I think 
people are kind of curious, Kaylee and Madison, I mean, you're a photojournalism major working in technology. Kaylee, you're an acting major working in Kansas College. There's a lot of fear of students today because of what they hear about unemployment, um, the lack of jobs for certain majors. I mean, a lot of us my age, um, you look at what we majored in and what we're doing today, and it's very different. And it's interesting to see that play itself out. Madison and Kaylee, do you want to say anything to that? They're curious, you know, how, how that switch or that transition and how hard was that? That really wasn't your career. I mean, I'm going to go be a CPA. Oh, now I'm a marketing specialist. That's a pretty big, big leap. So the two of you want to address that a bit? Yeah, I mean, uh, sure. Go ahead. Go for it, Kaylee. Uh, I was just going to say, um, yeah, so photojournalism. So, I mean, I, I use that more in my personal life now because I'm into photography on the side. Um, I mean, I graduated in, in to be yeah, like what I was doing with my life. Um, so <laughs> um, I had graduated like I had really wanted to be in print journalism. Print journalism was like basically dead at that point in time. So it was like, you know, what am I going to do? Um, and I actually wound up getting a job at an at the Apple retail store. So the store that's in Fashion Fair, I started working there um, back in 2012. And um, I, I just sort of jumped at every opportunity that was available to me. Like right when I had started working, they started rolling out this brand new thing for stores, where as someone who was working there, you could um, become like a trainer for the store. And I was like, this sounds rad. I'll go for it. So I just... I went for it and then that morphed into like more and more opportunity. And so for me, it was really just kind of taking some, like taking what was available and just kind of running with it. I love this like Richard Branson quote. That's like, if you're offered a seat on a rocket ship, you don't ask which, which uh, seat. You. Uh, and so I have very much subscribed to that in my professional life of like, this sounds cool. Let's see where it goes and just have kind of, you know, jumped on that. And so that's really why, I've sort of wound up uh, where I have is just taking opportunity and, and finding like what's interesting and what did I like about this job and what did I not like about this job so that I can sort of like morph and make decisions, um, you know, based on that. So it's, it's, it's been quite the adventure. Uh, that's for sure. Kaylee? <laughs> yeah, it is definitely quite an adventure and it's not an easy track. I don't necessarily recommend it to everyone, but <laughs> you know, if you're in that spot, it happens. Um, I was so 100% sure I was going to be a CPA. I joined all the, you know, I joined the Beta Alpha Psi, the Honor Society for Accounting. I met my first employer, Baker Peterson Franklin, um, who are, they got bought out by Moss Adams now, but I, I met them through Beta Alpha Psi. I had a job lined up before I was even graduated. I actually was working for them part-time in 2015. And I was just so sure I was going to be an accountant, but once I got into the work and, and kind of realized that maybe this is didn't want to do it's just not the, the work I love I had to take a gamble because you know I, I wanted to be happy I wanted to have a passion and drive behind everything I did so I I kind of I dabbled in marketing in college too I got a certificate in marketing from the Craig School and I remember sitting in Debbie and Michaela's office one day at Forum and Michaela's like you're not going to be an accountant you're a marketing person you watch you know <laughs> three years down the road you're going to be in marketing and sure enough here I am <laughs> So uh, it was difficult. I did, um, when I left the CPA firm, um, just the network I had built helped me kind of find a spot in marketing. So that actually the marketing director, uh, Julie over at uh, Baker Pierce and Franklin reached out to her contacts and, and kind of took me under her wing to go find some places in marketing that I could, could go and try out. And uh, kind of to Jose's point, I was doing some fun work. Um, I kind of did an internship after I graduated um, with a local events company, uh, DNI. I was doing some stuff for the Fresno Food Expo and I was volunteering and that kind of led into a part-time job. And then um, that led into part-time at the marketing agency I was at. And then I finally, I got a full-time offer from both DNI and Cohen Communications. And I ended up taking a, a full-time job at the marketing agency, Cohen Communications. So it was definitely, it was just, <laughs> it was difficult, but it was worth it because I found what I enjoyed. So um, just just, you know, you may be so sure you're going to do one thing in college, but just like Madison said, get on that rocket ship. If you have an opportunity to go do something that you think you're going to love, do it. Yeah, I noticed on a lot of your LinkedIn profiles, too, when you talk about networking, Kaylee, and, and actually finding a job 
after graduation, because you volunteered somewhere, a lot of you had volunteerism on your um, profiles as well, which I'm sure, again, led to skill development and led to connection. So I think there's one best way on getting started in a career pathways. It's a series of things is what it's sounding like. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you're all doing. Daniel Vartanian, you, you have an interesting story to tell in that you went on and got an MBA. So you went on to graduate school, but I don't know if you want to share now. You're kind of looking at grad school again. You're looking at making a pretty significant career change, and your major is pretty different from where you headed as well. Yeah, no, I was, I was pretty put me on the spot, Debbie. But um, <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I you know, the, the MBA for, for me was definitely, I think, a really good opportunity based on timing, right? Like I said, with me having eligibility left with cross country and track and field at Fresno State and being a scholarship athlete. But yeah, I think, you know, it, it's hard to, I think holistically, you look at, you know, your, just your entire life, you look at holistically where you're going to be from a, from a career standpoint, it's hard to pinpoint, yeah, I want to do the one, I'm a 19 year old, 20 year old, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that for the next 40 years, like, that's tough, that's a tough ask, right, so, you know, and even, even in different periods of your life, like, I, you know, when I was at Fairland State, I'm a completely different person now, I mean, living somewhere completely different, I'm a father now, my daughter's, you know, 18 months old, so, those, those change your, your priorities and, and your perspectives and, and your motivation, and your passion and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's, it's, you know, looking at the things that I do, because sometimes you, you have your core job, core work responsibilities. And then there's some things, you know, if you do, do well in those core work responsibilities, you, you get some other opportunities. And I've been able to get other opportunities at PepsiCo um, where I, you know, I've, I've been able to lead and recruit and interview and help mentor a lot of people who were in my position. You know, it, it, at PepsiCo, they call it the, you know, the campus hire. So they usually, they recruit typically from California around 10 to 12 schools, Fresno State being one of them. They usually pick one or two people per year. And I was lucky enough to be the one from, from Fresno State my year. And, you know, it's a tough going from a college kid to a, to a big organization that can, can swallow you up pretty quickly, but you have to look for those mentors. And it was hard for me to find that. So I always wanted to be that person for, for someone else. And I was able to be that for, for, for a lot of other people and, and guide people and help people in, you know, whatever path they want to go in at PepsiCo. Because if you're in a PepsiCo, you can, you can do anything. You can legal to HR, to finance, to sales, to leadership, to whatever, operations, warehouse, whatever you want to do. So I, I found that was really where I was having a, a passion and found a, a big passion for, for me was helping guide people and, and mentor people and, you know, sales and things like that are great. But um, you know, finding that, you know, wanting to do that for the next 30 years is something that I found really ignited the fire. My wife works in higher education at Cal State Fullerton. Mm -hmm. So I've been talking to her the last, you know, year or so about, about different things and trying to get different nuggets. And, and yeah, I think if, you know, I, you know, I'm looking into to going back and, and getting a different uh, master's degree in higher education, spe specifically in counseling. I want to be in that, in that field. So you talk about internships and, you know, potentially missed opportunities, right? In college, I, I think it would have been great to, to maybe intern in, in, in your office, Debbie, you know, that would have been maybe, maybe a better, maybe a better path or something, but you know, I think as I'll learn, I'm never going to turn, turn that away either. So yeah, I think, I think it's going to be a great, a great path and, and scary, right? Cause I'm 30, 30 years old. I'm a father and moving down here. But I think if, you know, I think if you think long-term, if I, if I want to work a little harder for the next three years to, to, to guide that path, I think it's going to work out for the next 30 after that. So Yeah, you know, I, with this career shifting, I, I read a study about how work, the future of work will shift. And our work lives, we may be working into our 80s. I won't be, but you all will be now. <laughs> uh, so we, we could be working into our 80s, and, and, and studies are showing that a career path will be 17 different jobs in seven different industries in your lifetime over 80 years of work. That's, you know, I'm talking little kids right now, people that have little kids, that's what probably their work life is going to look like. It's going to be very different than the, I'm going to work at Fresno State, I'm on year 32. That's going to be a pretty rare thing that you'd be working for a company for 32 years or a corporation. So um, I, I know that we only have so much time left. I kind of want to call on each of you. I know Daniel Dozier and Jose Ramos, you've got to run. So I'm going to call on you first. What skill sets do students need today when they graduate to survive today's work world? Jose, what do you think? What, what, what kind of skills do we need today to survive in the, this changing work world? Yeah, so I think it's, from the aspect of skill, I think it's very 
I think it's very straightforward for students to to attempt to, to try to understand what they may need. So understanding that they're coming into a competitive workforce with not the, without the experience that others may have, right? So kind of in alignment with, with some of the characteristics of, um, of what folks have already been mentioning, but when from the very beginning, from, from the very start, when you start looking for a job, turn that into your job. Looking for a job is your job, all right? So it takes a lot of effort for a lot of time um, understanding so so it can be frustrating right you apply for a number of different opportunities and you may not get calls from from any or, or very little of those um, organizations right so you, first off you need to really put the effort up front um, to make sure that you stand out all right so um, that's really important and then uh, um, if an organization does take the, a, a chance on you it's really important coming into the workforce that you are continuing to strive to stand out, right? So doing everything that you can to um, to take initiative, right? To be able to um, to communicate, to ask the appropriate question, right? To carry yourself in a way um, that is gonna show that that you are interested in in growing and developing developing with the organization, um, proving that you have knowledge. Uh, to bring to the workforce that you've learned from school, obviously, um, and just doing everything that you possibly can to carry yourself yourself in a in a way in a workplace in an environment um, where you have people that have been already been working for you know five, ten, fifteen, twenty years. Um, you have to be able to carry yourself in a way um, that is going to set you apart from others to be able to continue to grow with that organization and so on. So um, for me, I mean, I see it. I, I'm the recruiter for the organization here communication um, is it, huge right so doing your best to um, improve your communication skills where whether that's verbal or, or written um, you know and you can do that in a number of different ways um, and there, there's a way to take classes you can um, you know join a club and, and all these things are going to help you to be able to um, to become a better professional in, in the workplace so um, kind of in alignment of, of a lot of what's been mentioned already, but just um, just to, to put it simple, Debbie, I, I think uh, my recommendation is to just do everything you can to stand out um, and, and really pursue that passion like like you really um, are, like you really want it and you really need it, right? It's not just like, you know, just come work completing and doing everything that's that's um, in front of you you want to strive for beyond that and that's truly where those opportunities are going to open up um, for, for all of you so best of luck to you all it was good being on the call thank you everyone thanks jose it was so good to see you we'll stay we'll stay in touch daniel how what would you add to I'm that Any sorry I, I yes i have and i just want to make sure um okay get asked answer. sure go ahead mary um this individual says as a senior to start finding areas of work and interest, but I often find myself second guessing my abilities. Has anyone mm. ever had to overcome the challenges that came from being a first generation student? Um, and so I'd like to hear what uh, the panelists think about that to help this fine young person. So did anybody kind of underestimate the power of themselves you were first gener laura you want to address that yeah i was uh i feel like that's something that a lot of people deal with um me especially even now in my career now um i'm a first generation college student i'm the first in my family to go to college and i um, even to this day i sometimes sit in my office and i'm like oh my god you should pick the right person for the job. Like I second guess my own ability and skills. Um, but something that I owe exactly my imposter syndrome is real. Yeah. Something that I always kind of kept in the back of my mind is something that my professor Jan Edwards had always constantly reiterated to me is that if so if someone has picked you, they've seen something because it is your ability and to have confidence in that. Um, I had done so many jobs leading up to when I got my first job at the Fresno Chamber of Commerce. Um, and 
I told her, I'm like, I have no experience other than a couple of my internships. I don't know what to do. And she said, Laura, look at everything you've done and just pick out the skills that, that you, like, although, because my first job when I was at Fresno State, I was a tour guide. And obviously I'm not a tour guide now. I didn't sit there and think, oh, I'm going to be a tour guide for the rest of my life because that's all I've ever known and done. Um, but she was like, look, you have um, great public speaking skills. You know how to speak to a crowd. You know how to speak to a multiple range of ages. You know how to talk to kids. You know how to talk to adults. Time management skills. You were able to show them around the campus in less than an hour. So really looking at the work that you've done through a lens of your possible employer and kind of having the confidence within yourself of like, well, yeah, I know how to do this work and I've done this work. I can continue doing it and continue growing um, really makes a difference. Um, I'm at the Central Valley Community Foundation now and I applied for the job, not even meeting their qualifications. They wanted someone with five years of marketing experience. If I counted college, that was three. If I counted my professional career, I had one and a half. Um, I had, I really went in there thinking, oh, I'm not going to be able to do it, but I did my research. I sat down and I didn't lie on my resume. You know, I kind of tailored it to their asking, you know, this is what I'm able to do. These are the skills that I have and what I'm able to do. And I ended up getting the job. And for the longest time I was like, oh gosh, I feel like they picked the wrong person. But if you just continue telling yourself they've picked me for a reason because I do have these tangible skills, then it, it gets easier from there. <laughs> but yeah, as a first generation college student, because you know, no one's in your family has done this before. It, it the imposter syndrome, really, you feel it every day. But just remember within yourself that, you know, you have these skills. And if they picked you, it's because nobody else had those skills. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. Madison chatted and imposter syndrome is real. It is. And that's a really good thing to read up on. And I think a lot of college students feel that same way, especially now. I think just with everything going on, going through difficult times and they doubt themselves even more. Um, Daniel, going back to you, because I know you've got to run as well. Um, anything did, that you want to add on skill sets you think a, a student needs to, to survive today's workplace? Daniel um, Dozier. Yeah, so the first one I would definitely say is personal. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, yeah, perseverance for sure. Um, when uh, when I switched jobs uh, here about a year and a half ago, um, I uh, I didn't have the uh, the benefit of networking because I was in a new city, didn't know anybody, and uh, um, and I uh, applied for um, I actually lost count of how many jobs and how many different companies I applied with, but um, I was literally getting told no, like every day. And, uh, you know, it's not fun, obviously, but, uh, you know, you just gotta make sure you know what you're worth and, uh, keep at it. And I was, I was even, I was even doing the old school going door to door thing and, and, uh, to try to talk to people in person because, uh, you know, everybody just tells you to apply online. And yeah, I, I know, like, obviously everybody knows you can apply online these days, but, then you're just a number essentially and if you can you know use those soft skills we were talking about earlier to put yourself in front of somebody then you know maybe somebody will care about you maybe somebody will say oh you know this person they're really you know persistent they keep coming back here and bugging us and <laughs> uh and um i i did uh, make some progress that way i had uh some some nice hr people who sat down with me and uh, talk to me about uh, some of the opportunities they had available and, and how my skill sets lined up with what they were looking for and uh, even gave me some tips on uh, uh, how to go about applying. Like there was one company, they said that they get so many applicants that if they, if you don't apply within like the first like 50 people, they just stop looking at the, the resumes beyond that, that many resumes. So stuff like that, just to, uh, you know, be uh, persistent, put yourself out there and, and uh, yeah, have those good uh, interpersonal skills. Um, definitely, uh, definitely are the major things that have, that have helped me out a lot recently. That's great. Eric and Madison, you work in tech, technology companies. Um, Eric, how many, how many students do you think, do, we, do they need to be, up to speed on technology skills. How how important is that? You're at Google. How did that all work out for you with technology coming from 
Um, I mean, going back to what Laura had mentioned, imposter syndrome. I've been at Google for six years and I still feel the imposter syndrome because there's always someone who is more knowledgeable or someone who has more experience. And so that is something that is, you just have to learn how to deal with and recognize your own value. Um, coming from Fresno State with skills, it there are soft skills that are important and work experience is great, but it also is good to, rem to remind yourself that even if you apply to a job, you don't have to know everything that they're listing in the job requirement. There are skills that you can learn on the job. Technology skills are important. I know working for Google, which is like an internet search company, and I work in, in like my job is interviewing. So I work on the interview process at Google. Um, that a lot of it comes down to like, how do you sell yourself? How do you make your skills transferable, even if it don't align up directly? I would say if you know how to use Excel, if you know how to do app scripting, if you can do like light coding, it doesn't have to be the most, you don't have to be like writing, creating websites. Those skills are important if you want to work in a company that does value technology. Not all companies are like that, so you may not need all of those skills for jobs that you apply for. But if you can take classes on just like app scripting, learning how to do some things that are automated, those skills are very highly sought out, sought after, especially in the Bay Area, there's so many companies. Um, and so what it comes down to is after you have those skills is just how do you sell yourself? How do you position yourself um, with like your critical thinking skills and how do you apply it to hypothetical situations and behavioral questions, things like that. So. It's kind of like a, a two part question. Do you have the skills? Are you learning them if you want to learn them? And then how do you apply them to an interview? Sounds like we need to have you do an interviewing workshop for our students. <laughs> I think that's really valuable what you're sharing there. Madison, how about at GoDaddy? What skill set were they looking for? Yeah, I think, um, man, for my job in particular, I think it was it, a lot of what Eric was saying was it's like, tell me about your, like, tell a story, right? Like, so my interview was, was not like, can you do X, Y, and Z? It was very much like, tell me about a time that you worked through, you know, a difficult conversation with, you know, like a senior leader, or you had to like take senior people in a different direction. So I think that's one thing to mention for the group is that interviewing is, is different now. And so like, it is very, tell like thinking way so um i think for me because I've, I've sort of progressed to this point in my career where now i'm the person who's doing it, or i am the person who's looking for interns on my team which is like a weird it's weird to be at a point because i don't feel like i'm that old but um <laughs> uh but uh I, I think for me um you know like what i look for is is something that eric hit on which is which is critical thinking like can you think deeply about something? Are you someone who can think through a problem and, and come up with solutions? So basically like not someone that I would have to potentially handhold all of the time, right? Like, can you think deeply about things and, and try to come to your own conclusions? I think the other thing that really stands out for me is um, being open to feedback. So in my experience in hiring younger interns is sometimes there is this feeling of like, well, I'm here and I deserve to be here and like I can't do anything wrong and and what I'm looking for is someone who's like I'm here to learn I'm I'm here to make mistakes I'm here to to take that feedback and and be better you know so I think being open about that of, of just this desire to learn and and just having that mentality around feedback and the fact that like none of us are perfect we all have opportunities so so really being um, open to you know improvement in that way to Laura's point that she made earlier like apply for jobs even if you're not like you don't know a hundred percent of the things on a apply even if you're like 50 percent like just go for it like if you're interested and you're like i could do this uh you know like i have your marketing experience but like i know i can do it like apply like do it put yourself out there i think so many people don't take the chance on jobs like that because they feel like they have to check every box that is that is not true like okay. skills in many ways on the job skills can be taught but there are like these fundamental things about like critical thinking and, and stuff like that that you need to come with. So if you've got those, apply for the job. Okay, good advice. So Julia, Kaylee, Daniel, Garrett, we only have like three minutes left. I'm gonna ask you real quickly, Julia, you're in the finance industry. What top skills do students need to get into that industry? 
Um, I would say attention to detail and just being resourceful. I mean, we're dealing with huge numbers and, you know, you, you just, you can't mess up, unfortunately. And there are, you know, a lot of like checks and balances, but, you know, you just, everybody makes mistakes, but you just can't be sloppy on a regular basis. Um, so that's something that's super important to us in, in the banking world. But um, something to keep in mind, too, is that I was in a two-year training program, and they sent me to away for six months just to learn what I do. So um, as long as you can, like, have those, like, interpersonal skills and, like, you know, connect with the interviewers, show that you're dedicated and motivated and you want to learn, they're going to teach you so much on the job. Excellent. Kaylee, marketing world, what skills do you need? Uh, you definitely need to be adaptable. You know, things change day to day, mm -hmm. projects change day to day, events change day to day. Um, just being able to kind of go with the flow and adapt to different situations and different circumstances. And uh, I also am a big proponent of you got to be a lifelong learner. You're not going to come in with all those skills that you know, that you know how to do now, and you're going to continue to build skills even you know as you go through your career. Um, but I've always made it a point to uh, my answer to my boss is never I don't know. It's let me look that up. Let me figure that out. Because you just, you got to be able to, to think on your feet, um, do the research, know how to research training programs. If there's training programs for you in the field, it was for me a training program through the continuing education at Duke University. I, I recommend it. Just be a lifelong learner and be that person that's willing to solve the problem instead of just push the problem off to someone else. Yeah, I wanted to get into certificates because I know a lot of you had certificates and unfortunately we don't have time to do that, but um, that might be a conversation for another day because I'd like to know more about that. Garrett, kind of your last thought on skill sets, you're, you're in the HR world, you're in the energy industry, again, a whole different industry than anybody else. Any quick thoughts on that? So for my HR majors, you're going to laugh, um, but I hope you're taking lots of notes in college, you're going to be taking lots of notes in your career. Um, <laughs> investigations, interviews, uh, you better be good at taking notes. But one, one of the more things that have helped me out the most is knowing my strengths. I knew what I liked in college. I liked employment law, and that's just fascinating. Um, I didn't realize that would turn into my strength, though, and I didn't recognize that for until I was a few years into my career. Um, and that has been, and leveraging that strength has defined each of my next uh, all of my progression in my job that I've, in my career that I've made um, it pushed me into safety and risk management when there is an ongoing OSHA investigation it pushed me into HR uh, a manager position when there was um, an ongoing um, EEOC complaints harassment um, litigation all that kind of stuff and then I'm now in a represented organization while having no labor management skills prior to this um, but the fact that I can um, uh, successfully translate employment law and apply it into the workplace uh, got me in. And now I'm, now I'm advising leaders on how to handle uh, contract grievances, disputes, um, and all kinds of really fascinating stuff. Um, so you may not know your strengths yet, um, but if you like something, keep focusing on that. Awesome. Daniel, parting words. Words of advice? Yeah, for sure. I mean, in terms of the skills you talked about, I mean, leadership, follow-up and things like that. But when I talk about leadership, it's not necessarily you being the person that's, you know, the rah-rah up in the meeting, standing up and, and, and being, being that person. You can be that person, but then there's also the leaders who, after that meeting, when half of the group is so confused, they go to that other leader, right, where it's more of a silent leadership. So you can be all those people, but then speaking fearlessly, I think, is, is one of the biggest things because when people recruit talent, bring in talent, it's really three different ways you're going to bring it in, right? It's going to be internal where the person's already there. They're going to hire them up and get to keep, going to keep getting promoted externally. Maybe someone who's been in a different company for 10 years, they want to bring that valuable experience over. But then there's a really, you know, a third where it's fresh out of college or not a lot of experience where all those opinions matter and they're all imperative to, to bring that company forward. If you just have the same thoughts over and over and you're promoting people, you're not going to get new fresh ideas. So just being able to speak fearlessly and understanding, hey, if you don't have the experience, you may have the ideas that turn into these experience. So speaking fearlessly, I think is really, really important for, for everybody at all levels. Great, Laura, one last comment from you as well. Sorry, I wanna make sure we get to everybody. Um, I think just to echo off of everyone else, um, having that willingness to learn, um, Kayla brought up, uh, my, my professor always says, don't say you don't know, say you don't know yet, because you mm -hmm. will 
out. So yeah, I, just having a willingness to learn and just being open to new opportunities. Um, when I think of networking rather than um, just trying to make the most connections, it's really trying to establish a relationship um, even if it's within other different industries, because you never know where those connections can lead you to. So I would really um, advise students to really try to make connections with whoever they're able to meet and get a hold of, because um, they create a different career, or take you down a different path, so. Thank you, so much wisdom on this screen of nine people today, I mean, awesome. Thank you so much. I'm hoping that students that are out in the audience listening today, look these individuals up on LinkedIn because they're all on there. And it tells you really their story and their path of where they worked and when, and it has their skill sets. There's so much value in looking at those LinkedIn profiles. So I really hope they reach out to you and kind of do like informational interviews with you has been my dream is to connect more of our current students to alums because I think you really are the picture of student success. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm actually retiring next month, so this is literally goodbye for me. But I will get, I'm gonna stay retired on LinkedIn so you can see what I'm doing with my life. I'm gonna go figure out another path of what I wanna do in the next stage of my life. But I'm really happy that we could all meet and get together. Um, this is recorded. I think other people will definitely benefit from hearing you. So stay well and stay connected and go dogs. Thanks everybody for being here today. Bye.